Hi. A very, very quick update today about um, about the, the Tigran monk who has been detained at uh, Boli Airport for the past, I think uh, it would have been three days now. Um, so I, I don't know if you could uh, make him out from the, from the picture, but the, the man in the middle uh, with, um, with the luggage and uh, black veil and, and turban and, and beard uh, is um, the man in, in question um, Abbas Arak Abraham and he he's surrounded by you know what looks like to me um, at least by either security officers um, of the airport or uh, policemen. It's very, very difficult to, to tell. Um, also because it's, it's complicated by the fact that a federal police spokesperson said that the police wasn't involved in, in this, in the detention. And Ethiopian Airlines also said that they had no knowledge about, about this. And it would make sense because the, the airlines wouldn't be in the business of detaining uh, people. It, it wouldn't have the, the means um, to do so. Uh, so we don't really know by, by whom he has been detained. The, the only thing that we know, as um, as it has been reported, is that he has been detained at the airport for the for the past uh, three days. Um, a bit of context first, maybe um, is important. I think uh, so. Abbas Arak Abraham was on his way to his homeland, um, Tigray, from Australia. Um, he, he lives in in, in Australia, and. Or he had a um, layover um, at Boli Airport um, on his way to, to Tigray and he he was told um, again he was it's not maybe it's not clear from from this tweet but from other um, reporting we understand that he was told he could either um, go to Addis Ababa to the city or return to Australia but he couldn't um, continue his flight to, to Tigray and he he asked them why and they they couldn't give him any any reason um, I think he has done two or three interviews with with um, Tigray TV and um, in the, on those interviews he, he, he made it clear that this the people who have detained him told him that he wasn't he, he couldn't fly um, he couldn't continue his flight to, to Tigray and he refused to to go to Addis and he refused to to return uh, because he well uh, who, who would blame him he, he came all the way from Australia to um, to visit his family in Tigray but also to attend a very very important event um, I think um, on July 9 uh, if I'm not mistaken where the Tigray church will hold a very very important event of I think I don't know if the word is appointing or um, um, or electing or um, um, but anyways it's going to it's, it's going to hold a very very important event in in Aksum, uh following its um, severing of relations with the Ethiopian church um, it's going to have its own bishops and archbishops I don't know what the the process is called maybe consecration or something like that but anyway he has been invited to to attend that because he's a very important uh, personality in, in the in the Tigrayan church and to, to give you a bit of context about Sarek Abraham for the for the past three years he has been a very very active um, in the um, Tigray advocacy um, in Australia in terms of uh, providing spiritual support to to grant activism to grant people in Australia who are um, who have been demonst demonstrating and uh, he's been a very very vocal um, critic of both the Ethiopian regime and the Eritrean regime for the atrocities that they have unleashed um, on Tigray and for those reasons um, he has been held in very, very high contempt by the Amhara um, commentariat. And they have been, tr for the past couple of days, they have been trying to twist and exaggerate the things he said to create the impression that he, that he said stuff comparable 
to the very, very pernicious stuff that the Ethiopian church has been doing uh, for the past three years in terms of supporting the war on Tigray, the atrocities, the denial that the church um, did uh, for the atrocities in Tigray, and the very, very nasty and 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 um, um, nasty and vile things that uh, bishops from the Mahara region have said about Tigray, uh, from saying that if they had uh, Tigrayan blood, they would um, they would remove it somehow, to saying that they would prefer to be to be ruled by the devil to being ruled by Tigrans and a number of other very, very nasty, um, hateful, uh, venomous stuff. So, um, Salak Abraham has been on the radar of the Amhara commentary for the past couple of days. Uh, they have been saying that um, everybody has said um, nasty stuff, and if it came down to apologizing, everybody has stuff to apologize, and therefore that the Tigray Church too should apologize because of what the, the monk, um, has allegedly said, but of course, I have been trying to uh, troll through the internet to find the th the stuff that they they are um, accusing him of having said, and there, there's nothing in what he said that you couldn't defend. Yes, he, he said that the Ethiopian state was a genocidal state, a, a perfectly defensive position. He said that the reason why some Amhara politicians uh, try to um, cling on to the Ethiopian identity was because the Amhara um, identity is not a solid foundation and a, a perfectly uh, defensive position to, to hold. Maybe you could say that as a, as a priest, as a church person, he shouldn't have wedded in political matters. But again, nothing untoward or disobliging or, or, or venomous about that. And he has said a couple of other things in, in the heat of the moment um, thing, you know, during his advocacy for, 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 for Tigray. But nothing that you would say is beyond the pale. Nothing that you would compare, for instance, to the people who said that um, there was no murder in action, for instance, where everybody, including the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, has reported that hundreds of people were, um, were murdered in, in cold blood in action by Eritrean and Ethiopian forces. Um, so, so we don't know why we don't know why he has been detained um, in, in Addis. But I think it's not difficult to to, to guess. Um, the The reason uh, they wanted to detain him is to try to create a moral equivalence by saying that he was also responsible for saying nasty things, and therefore that everybody is um, equally um, guilty. Uh, for, for saying for saying bad um, stuff, that could be one of the reasons why they they would detain him, or maybe they think that the, he's one of the driving forces behind the establishment of the Tigray Church, and by barring him from traveling to Tigray, they think that they could ruin uh, the event uh, scheduled for for the 9th of of, of July, uh, or it could be other reasons. But anyway. Uh, the point I want to uh, emphasize today is he has been detained without any charge. He has been detained without any official reason. And the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, I'm sure, um, is aware that this is happening, but they haven't issued a statement. They haven't um, called for his release. Uh, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, even though it has been preaching about reconciliation, and about moving on from, from the past, hasn't condemned his detention, um, although they, they should have um, condemned, and they should condemn, they must condemn his, his detention. Why would he be detained without any, any um, reason? Uh, but especially the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, why, why would the commission not call on the Ethiopian regime to release? Is, again, as far as we know, and there is every reason to 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 think so. Um, this so, he he hasn't committed any crime, and actually, even the the officers aren't alleging any any crime. What what they have been t telling him, either he could go to to Addis as a, as a free man, or return to Australia. But he he couldn't go to to Tigray. So I think we know um, what they are trying to to achieve here, uh, and it's it's just it's, it's a 
blatantly criminal activity that the the officers or whoever the the people who have detained him are and um i i think uh, we should we should call on the Ethiopian human rights commission to call on the regime to release him and uh, we should call on other um, uh, human rights defenders like um human rights watch or amnesty international to uh, to advocate for, for, for his re release, you know, it's, 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 um, it's grotesque that an old man who was on his way home after um, uh, a long time, after having gone through for the past uh, three years, very, very painful experience with all the excitement of meeting his family, uh, of being um, at, at, at home. Uh, to be stranded at at, um, at the airport with no apparent reason uh, m must be very very painful for, for for him. So I just want to bring you th this um, update um, today. Uh, please uh, do what you can do uh, to advocate for, for for his release, and um, and uh, that was that from uh, from me. Thank you for um, thank you for the for your time. Bye-bye.